everybody. I'm Sam Turner, the Chief Technology Officer of the High Body Manufacturing Catapult. I'm going to talk to you today about smart connected manufacturing and the work we're doing and also where we see smart connected manufacturing going. The High Body Manufacturing Catapult is a network of seven centres around the UK. We've got about three and a half thousand staff, engineering staff, distributed around um, seven locations. We have centres focused on, on different manufacturing technologies and different sectors. And hopefully those of you who heard uh, Catherine Bennett, our CEO speak already, has laid out the ambition and, and the role we have in transforming the manufacturing footprint of the UK through innovation. So our centres all work with the strong digital content. We have the National Manufacturing Institute for Scotland and AFRC up in Glasgow, um, working on metal forming in a broad suite of, of digital and automation solutions. Centre for Process Innovation in Teesside, working in the process industries. We've got the AMRC, Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre in Sheffield, working on automation, digitalisation, machining. The Nuclear AMRC with a focus on the civil nuclear sector. Um, the Manufacturing Technology Centre in Coventry, working again on automation, digitalisation, and additive manufacturing. Warwick Manufacturing Group, looking at decarbonisation of transports, with the strong support for digital manufacturing as well. And the National Composite Centre in Bristol looking at, at composite processing, but again, a real big focus on, on digitalization of the design and manufacturing stages there. So we work in the, the mid-TRL space, essentially, between early stage research and um, private sector deployment. So we're de-risking and bridging that innovation valley of death. It's not quite as linear as it's shown on this slide, but we are working on scaling up new technologies, integrating them, and demonstrating new solutions. And importantly, when we look at smart factory and smart connected manufacturing, the integration of those solutions is crucial. So we may be picking solutions that some of which are available on the market, some which are early stage development from technology providers, but integrating those in a way that can demonstrate step change improvements in productivity, performance, quality um, is a crucial part of what we do. And I'll talk a little bit about how we're doing that within a series of test beds at the moment and bring out some examples. So where's manufacturing going? Where's smart connected manufacturing going? We see it's a fusion of technologies that I've mentioned already. We see certainly um, internet things and connectivity at the heart of that. So looking at big data analytics, looking at things like augmented reality solutions, advanced robotics automation, um, additive manufacturing. These are the technologies that were outlined in the Made Smarter Review as underpinning um, digitalized manufacturing. But without the connectivity piece, we don't really get the delivery and the transformation that we're, that we're hoping to achieve. And connecting this data, um, the engineering insights uh, and modeling capability together means we can really can transform uh, performance and productivity of manufacturing facilities. So think about where this might take us. Um, there's a bit of a quip here, but around the, the autonomous factory. So you know, what does the future factory look like? It's, it's going to be run by one human and a dog. And the human's there to feed the dog and the dog's there to make sure the human doesn't touch anything. Now, that's a bit of a parody. We're probably not going to get to that fully level of, of autonomy. And clearly, there's, good, there's a lot of roles in the factory environment for, for people and humans in the loop. But the roles are changing somewhat. And I think if um, the talk of industrial revolutions, if the third industrial revolution is about computing and automation, which transform many manufacturing facilities and shop floors, um, the change we have now, the acceleration of data, um, cloud analytics and connectivity really means that we're going to see automation decision making. So moving towards, so rather than, automate, rather than automating the shop floor roles, we're starting to automate some of the manufacturing engineering and design functions and building those in together. So in that future state, the technology is crucial, actually. And a lot of value add is not just in knowing how to deploy technology. It's going to be in building running and maintaining the systems um, that actually integrate and deliver our factories. So connectivity and automated decision making and analytics is going to be at the heart of, of any success. So the underpinning parts of this then would be that data driven um, manufacturing, human knowledge and more traditional engineering modeling approaches with the three uh, icons at the bottom there. Fusing those together, I think, builds that system intelligence that's going to run the smart connected factories of the future and supply chains. So system intelligence is built on all three of those. It's not the data alone, but the data is a crucial enabler that accelerates um, 
this is making response control times beyond those which can be achieved currently with traditional engineering models and with human knowledge alone. And actually there's a great chance if you look at a changing workforce to be able to bring in a generation of workers into manufacturing who are very data literate, digital natives, working with a manufacturing workforce that had some neglect for a few decades, perhaps in terms of investment and, and bringing stuff through. So much of the know-how in the manufacturing workforce currently is reaching the tail end of its career. So be able to bring together that expertise and human knowledge and know-how, a digitally literate and, and, and native workforce and connecting and building systems using the data that we can capture on the shop floor across our supply chains um, is going to be central to building successful smart manufacturing. So a couple of scenarios then of how this might work. What might a smart connected factory look like? And we move towards this increased autonomy. Um, I'm going to use an example here just to try and bring the case to life, really. If you think about manufacturing of maybe, you know, last decade, even a few years ago, current, often very much paper-based, um, not incredibly dynamic, not a huge amount of, of data capture and, and, and rapid learning. The learning is done by the humans in the, in the loop in the case of the traditional manufacturing. But you take the analogy of you know, your factory, you've got a root card that's printed, at a particular point in time based upon the best knowledge we had at that time in designing a process and then that the manufacturing components follow that root card follow the processes that are predetermined around the factory over time an analogy here would be a map or an a to, you know paper based a to z think about the way we now navigate our geographical space we don't very rarely uh, you know carry maps or a to z now it's all done through apps like google maps or uh, maps and in that in this case we're not just referring to definition that was produced at a fixed point in time at some point previously we're looking at an understanding of all we need to do is tell the system where we want to get to and where we're starting and you've got an intelligent system effectively here that is looking at current conditions traffic conditions um, and determining the best optimized route to get to that, to that destination so the analogy for the smart con uh, connected factory environment would be looking at manufacturing systems that can understand what our objectives are and destinations balancing needs across you know different batteries and products coming through a factory and determine the best way to deliver uh, the products on time and on cost and on quality. Optimising for multiple objectives potentially, including uh, thinking now about manufacturing emissions and net zero, which we expect to become an increasing um, challenge and opportunity for the manufacturing community. So another way we can look at the smart connected manufacturing is distributed factory. So actually thinking about connectivity, not just within the factory, but across networks. If we look at the icons here, where we start to connect every item potential or asset on a shop floor, and I'll come on to some examples of how we're trying to do that as well through legacy, legacy connectivity. There's a huge install base across the UK that of legacy equipment and capital that needs to be connected and harnessed so we can truly um, extract the data and then by the insights that come from that data to improve performance and, and make decisions but if those devices can be connected within a factory to improve that decision making and performance why can't those devices be connected across a network of locations so one opportunity we, we can see potentially from from smart connected manufacturing is more distributed networks perhaps different sites and companies coming together to, to act as a single organization bidding together those connected supply chains. Um, but we could have distributed assets, so more localized delivery and manufacture of goods and services. Again, if the expertise is embedded in the systems that execute manufacturing processes rather than the engineers that are on site um, producing the components and parts, we have much greater flexibility in how we want to connect and distribute our manufacturing facilities and assets based upon supply materials potentially on energy, but clearly on, on delivery and demand as well. Those connected factories could become connected across, not just against national supply chains, but international as well. So it's another interesting, when we think, start to think about connectivity and what that means in terms of the intelligence it builds and performance drivers, we can be much more open about where we locate those connected manufacturing assets and facilities. So I mentioned net zero already. Um, we've got some very clear targets now for the UK government. 2050 clearly for net zero. We've got the 78% reduction for 2035. 
in terms of missions, which is a really important staging post. And I think that later target recently, in the last few months, I've seen a change and an awakening for the engineering and manufacturing community that, that things need to accelerate pretty quickly. We have a problem right now though, that we don't quite measure um, our emissions effectively in manufacturing. We do have an industrial decarbonisation strategy that came out uh, earlier this year, uh, which lays out some part of a pathway, but it focuses on emissions from UK shores only. Our commitment for 2050 is related to um, territorial emissions for the UK, not consumption emissions. So consumption emissions would be emissions associated with the goods and services consumed by the UK population. And naturally our manufacturing emissions are distributed effectively around the world. And in fact, over the last three decades, our manufacturing consumption emissions, so the manufacturing element that accounts for our goods and services consumed in the UK, have pretty much flatlined over the last 30 years. Whilst the territorial emissions from manufacturing in the UK, so it's the manufacturing occurring in the UK, our emissions footprint has pretty much halved in that period. And that sadly is largely down to offshoring of our manufacturing footprint. If you see the, the headline, figures are not really changing. So manufacturing in terms of total emissions, for the UK territorial emissions, we believe it's around 15 to 30%. The government numbers say 30 currently. And actually some work we've just completed recently suggests that manufacturing's percentage of consumption emissions for the UK could be as high as 40% of our total emissions. So it needs a really clear focus. And actually there's gonna be opportunity for those that can crack this problem of reducing and evidencing reduction in manufacturing emissions to start winning business. We believe that low carbon manufacturing is going to become a business winning opportunity in the same way as cost, quality and delivery are current drivers. So 89% of emissions associated with UK's demand for manufacturing goods occur outside of the UK. That's not a great position for leadership when we're thinking about COP26 and G7 discussions that have been happening um, through June. What could provide a great leadership position would be to look at the, the driving down emissions in our manufacturing supply chains wherever they happen in the world looking at codes and standards and ways of tracking and capturing and measuring emissions um, in manufacturing facilities. So measuring and accounting for greenhouse gas emissions is going to be central to decarbonising our manufacturing footprint. One way of decarbonising our UK footprint is to further offshore our manufacturing. That is not a really desirable outcome in terms of a responsible way to get to net zero or a sustainable way in terms of economic and social sustainability for the UK, as well as environmental sustainability. So we need to take responsibility for our manufacturing footprint, wherever it may sit, and look at how we can start to drive down emissions and potentially, as a nation, start to win business on the back of it. So we think we need to be able to incentivize and reward manufacturers who do start to decarbonize, prepare UK firms and supply chains for a global shift to low emission sourcing, which we think will come from somewhere. So why not start to take a lead on that from the UK? potentially green shoring. So locating manufacturing to low emitting regions, could the UK become a destination for that? And accelerating innovation in you know, technology exports. And this is where digitalization comes in because it's gonna be part of the answer in the smart connected factory must be part of the answer for tracking, measuring activities that lead to material and energy consumption in factory so that we can target and reduce those and then evidence them. And equally there'd be opportunities to develop some of these technologies that will be deployed by UK manufacturers on a global marketplace as global supply chains start to look at how it can reduce emissions. So it's also increases resilience, it creates a leadership position, but crucially, um, the measurements, data capture and reporting of factory and supply chain emissions is going to be central to delivering this goal. And the smart factory has got to be at the heart of achieving that. So we think about resource efficient net zero carbon factories, various inputs such as materials, um, energy, restricted substances potentially. The thing about the, the, as well as materials that have been processed, as well as energy, we've got water, but other elements of resources that we need to be measuring and accounting for and optimizing our usage of in factory. And then also thinking about the products that we're producing through life. If we start to embed um, functionality and connectivity in the factory and, and capture data, that data does need to track through life and come to the end of life where we started to think more about remanufacturing facilities. So how can we disassemble? How can we retain value of key parts uh, of, of a bit of materials for a product so we can see a second life or at least a recycled or you know, ideally upcycled um, applications for some of the materials and products that we're, we're, we're developing. 
around 80%, 60 to 80% of the emissions embodied in a manufactured good at the point of sale come from the, the materials rather than downstream processing. So looking at resource efficiency for manufacturing materials for both manufacture and end of life and life extension and maintenance is going to be crucial. So again, digitalization and enablement of smart connectivity and communications is going to be central to the way we capture data from legacy and from new manufacturing equipment that can then drive the decision making and optimization um, to drive down to net zero. So crucial in, in terms of helping us make the decisions to get to net zero, crucial also in capturing the data that we can then report against. So we get evidence for any manufacturer, let's say a mid-tier machining company in a supply chain, if you get evidence that actually you've added no emissions to the batch of components that you've just been processing. And that's going to help you win business as the market starts to drive towards um, delivering to net zero obligations. Some sectors will be ahead of others in terms of making commitments for sourcing against net zero supply chains. One thing we'd like to see, I think, is accounting standards that are deployed across industry that will accelerate this pace of change. And again, data capture, smart connectivity in factory, smart connectivity across supply chains is going to be central um, to optimizing and evidencing reduced manufacturing emissions. I'm going to talk a little bit now about um, innovation hubs through the Made Smarter program. There's a couple of um, competitions open currently for smart factory and supply chain innovation hubs, places where we can bring together the solutions with real challenges and problems faced by manufacturers in an open environment to test technology solutions, for technology developers to test those solutions, um, to look at the applicability for the problems, applicability for the manufacturing sector, and also for manufacturers to come and see solutions showcase the problems like their own and a chance to play, test, innovate, de-risk those manufacturing and digital smart factory solutions before deployment. So first of all, I'll say a little bit about the Digital Supply Chain Innovation Hub. Um, there's a competition out now. We bid along with the Digital Catapult and NPL and um, TWI as a consortium to, to run a smart digital supply chain innovation hub. And the, the vision for our consortium here, and the similar visions in whichever hub goes forward, is to create a virtual hub, data observatory network of industrial living labs to optimize physical, informational, financial flows across all tiers of manufacturing supply chains. So smart connectivity is at the center of this vision. And the mission is to deliver, a, develop a globally competitive, resilient, sustainable industry digitally enabled ecosystem solving challenges in many today's manufacturing supply chains. The target would be to get over a thousand people developing new skills, digital skills, hundred new solutions developed and demonstrated through the, through the hubs and increase visibility into 20% greater resilience within supply chains. So resilience in supply chains has certainly been tested and exposed throughout the COVID uh, program. I was part of the uh, UK Ventilator Challenge Consortium um, and that we managed to deliver in, in a couple of months what should have been about three years worth of ventilators, 14,000 ventilators. But that was enabled partly because those supply chains were, were, were otherwise available because the traditional sectors of aerospace and automotive at that time were on pause. And also 10 percent reduction in waste. So looking, driving down um, energy and material waste as a, as a key driver for, the, for these hubs. And this will be a mixture of, of physical and digital assets. So much of this will be online availability, looking at things like supply chain databases um, and supporting manufacturers throughout through supply chains on how to go and decarbonize and improve performance. Um, smart factory test beds. Again, there's a competition running. We've been again with the summer consortium for a network of smart factory test beds. But at the HVM Catapult, we've been delivering a pilot for the Made Smarter program, uh, looking at a network of test beds, which is just concluding um, over the last few weeks. I've got a couple of examples of those. So one example is looking at, we've got a, some similar examples here, looking at, at smart connected factory test bed. And this one is actually based on our factory 2050 facility at the AMRC in Sheffield, where we created a connected factory hub that can then connect into a range of different manufacturing applications, connecting to legacy uh, machine tools, enterprise systems, automation sales, robotics, smart hand tools, autonomous guided vehicles in factory, and then through that hub, we can access cloud services, on-premise services, uh, and, and process the data capture. 
So this is very much about connectivity, agile connectivity. Um, we think about the role that 5G can play in terms of um, you know, parallel processing uh, and bandwidth is going to be crucial in factory and, and in supply across supply chains. So this demonstrates we have a number of projects connecting different assets and showing how that connectivity can um, improve performance uh, for any given manufacturing process and a great way for, for tech companies who may or may not currently be active in the manufacturing sector to come and test solutions. So it may be connectivity devices, it may be signal processing, it may be AI, AR, um, so artificial intelligence, augmented reality solutions in this environment to de-risk them before deployment. Um, a comparable one here also the MRC legacy system connectivity. This is where a machine tool was censored up so we could gather insights into performance, predict better predictivity of uptime, and in a range of solutions that then have been tested and demonstrated on this connected machine tool. So smart connectivity gives the insight that means we can get much better visibility on uptime, productivity, quality, and energy consumption uh, for these facilities and showing how this can be done for legacy assets was a really important demonstrator that we've produced here as well. Got some others in looking at different sectors, so the pharmaceutical sector, uh, but CPI, um, we've got one, work piece here that's looking at a test bed for process analytical technologies and advanced process control to monitor control the glucose concentration in mammalian cultures. The application very much around um, pharma, but it could be applied to food and drink as well. And this connectivity, we have a number of different devices in the in the flow in the test bed here that are not previously connected, that are standalone processes. And what we've got here, the yellow chart bars show the, the connectivity now, physical connectivity, where samples would We've been automated in terms of processing between each step. But importantly, the blue lines show the digital connectivity now, where we've got connectivity back to the factory, intelligence making decisions um, with a full uh, feedback process loop and, and automating effectively uh, the decision making process and performance. And that again has been a test bed for solution providers to come and test their bespoke parts of that system and for manufacturers to come and see solutions that they could consider deploying themselves. Um, also got another example from CPI looking at the high throughput formulation robots, integrated analytical capabilities, another test bed that's been made available, again, showcasing solutions in here. Again, remote connectivity in an essential part of this. And the probe station within here um, has been developed and demonstrated as well. So this is the probe station as part of that solution, looking predictive versus actual fat content. Um, again, part of a smart connected in the loop probe system. Um, which has been looking at fat content for things like milk samples and, and other, um, uh, other foodstuffs and, and, and liquids. So we've got a range of applications here that cut across, you know, aerospace, uh, food and drink, pharmaceuticals, automotive. But some common challenges, though, is all about driving productivity. We think an increasing challenge around getting to net zero emissions in ever helping to reduce emissions in the first place and then evidence those, and also developing new business offerings. That may be companies coming from the telecoms or tech sector or manufacturers who start to build that systems intelligence, embedding the current knowledge and know-how of an organization into digitalized systems could create new business opportunities um, to take that know-how to new markets. So all those sectors are facing similar challenges. All of these challenges can be met by looking at it connecting existing and new factory assets, connecting supply chains and using the insight that we can derive from that to drive performance towards these goals. If you're interested in connecting with HVM Catapult or any of our partners, you can access our website at hvmcatapult.org.uk. If you're interested in the, the pilot test beds we just talked about, then um, we've got our Smart Factory Innovation Hub portion of the website. So we'd love to share with you some of those um, technology solutions we've got developed and demonstrated and be able to engage with us directly um, through those test beds and the whole huge vast range of facilities and, and services that we offer uh, around our network so thank you very much uh, please i'm happy to take um, questions through the chat or or you can access directly by the websites to take questions thank you very much <music>